Okay, this video is going to be to be able to check on your uh, new candidates that are on ISIMS. So uh, in a previous uh, video, I showed you how to log into your ISIMS through your Google Apps. Once you are on your ISIMS landing page, um, typically you would want to go to your uh, left side of the screen. My landing page for ISIMS is going to look different as a district manager, so don't get confused by that. Um, but this little tab that's out here, some of them, it's pinned that way where it's already out. And then some of them, you have to actually put your mouse over it for it to pop out. But you're going to see here jobs with new candidates. And that's where you're going to want to click. And then anytime that you have something like this with a little arrow, you can always expand it. And so that's how you're going to find your candidates. And so then as you have different ads placed for housekeepers, laundry workers, uh, so on and so forth, you would basically just open up the requisition. When you do that, then you're going to get to the specific candidates that you have there. So this particular job posting that I have um, has one candidate that has applied. So you click on the candidate's name and their profile will then populate. At that point, you have access to their resume um, so that that way you can see, uh, you know, their background, see if they're qualified, et cetera. Um, you have access also to any notes that have been put into play. Um, so for example, this candidate has uh, interviewed with somebody else before um, and then it says other candidates selected. So uh, maybe this particular manager was in between two managers and decided to go with the other manager. Um, so the notes are good in case that candidate has hopped around from building to building so that that way you can uh, see if uh, you know they, they have a history with us. Um, if you were to add a note up here um, so the, after an interview so that that way people can see your notes, um, that's also helpful for the next person. Um, but going back to the resume, you're going to see their information, obviously their email and their phone numbers listed here. It's also listed on the left-hand side. Sometimes you will see a discrepancy because when they apply, they might put in on Indeed a different um, email or phone number and that whatever that they had um, uploaded on their resume. So um, take a look at that because sometimes they don't always match. Um, at this point, you can either pick up the phone or send a text message to the applicant so that that way you can let them know, hey, uh, you applied and I'd like to set up a phone screen. Um, if you don't have that kind of time because the day is a little uh, crazy and you don't have time to make phone calls, you can actually uh, send an email to this candidate to set up a phone interview. So at that point, you would hit advance and then reviewed, selected for phone interview. When you do that, you will get a pop-up with the actual email that it's going to send to the applicant. Um, it is titled um, Phone Interview Request with Healthcare Services Group. Um, it has uh, basically uh, some pre-populated fields here. So like the name will pre-populate, whatever they applied for should populate. Um, this one says, I recently received your resume for this position. I was very impressed by your resume and background and would like to invite you to first round of interviews to tell you a little bit more about the position. It also requests for them to offer you a couple dates and times that would be good for your schedule for a 10 to 20 minute phone call. Um, what I like here is at the bottom, it actually will send them a, uh, a brochure um, that tells a little bit about uh, healthcare services group so that that way they're a little bit prepped uh, prior to the phone call. Uh, once uh, you have everything uh, populated here, all you would have to do is hit send um, and then that would actually go to their email. Um, and then when they respond, it actually, you don't have to respond through this platform. When they respond, it should go to your Gmail um, so that that way you can do it. A lot of folks like to do this on a Friday um, to send you know emails to all their new candidates um, and then check them on Mondays and start setting up phone interviews. It's not a bad way to do it so that that way you're not sitting there making a bunch of phone calls. Uh, currently, I have 26 in my queue. Uh, for all the different ones that I have listed. Um, and so I'll be sending emails out to those and then checking my emails and setting up phone interviews. So that's how you would uh, check that uh, for new candidates. Uh, if you are not interested in the candidate after you have already looked at their resume, then you would hit the reject button and then reviewed, uh, you know, not selected. Uh, if you do review not selected, it's going to give you uh, options of why you didn't select them. Some of them uh, might be that, uh, you know, you were unable to contact them or you called them and it was a poor phone screen 
or um, you set up an interview and they didn't show up and you're looking to reject that candidate. So there's a couple different reasons why you would reject somebody, but you definitely want to be able to uh, move these candidates through the fields so that that way we know, uh, you know, where they're going to be at in the queue and they don't just sit in your new candidate bin. Because once you clear these out, so after I get rid of the 26, then I won't get confused with any of the new ones that are coming on board. Um, to get back to your main screen, always hit this iSIMS icon and it'll take you back to your main landing page.